Hi, um, I'm Dom Hoffman. I'm the uh, GM and co-founder of Vine. This is uh, Colin Kroll, the uh, CTO and co-founder of Vine. And um, this is our first time uh, up here together doing this as Vine, and we've had drinks, so uh, <laughs> who knows what could happen. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, this idea that um, sort of guided everything that we did uh, uh, with Vine, this, this, um, this concept that great apps are simple and complex. Um, and every single part of what we did in Vine uh, was informed by, uh, by this notion. And before I talk about how we took this idea and applied it to all that we did at Vine, I wanted to go through um, some of the other apps that we've seen in the app store that we think sort of uh, subscribe to, to the same theory. So um, apps like uh, Dark Sky, which um, will tell you uh, in the next hour when it's going to rain down to the minute. So the simple problem is, do I need to bring an umbrella? Do I need to put on rain boots? What do I need to do? But behind solving that simple problem is a really complex set of, of algorithms and, and engineering work to, to solve that question. So simple and complex. Um, or an app called Cut the Rope. Um, simply, I just want to cut a rope and <laughs> drop candy into a cute monster's mouth. That's what I want to do. And Cut the Rope lets me do that really simply. But as I continue to play Cut the Rope, it gets more and more complex over time um, to the point where it becomes almost mind-bending. But I'm never doing anything besides cutting a rope. Simple and complex. Moves. Um, the best pedometer app on the App Store. And you don't have to do anything. You open it and keep it open in the background. And it does the rest. It keeps track of how many steps you've taken walking, walking how far you've gone on your bike, um, how far you've ran. All of this stuff happens in the background. I don't have to do anything. It uses really complex engineering work to get all that information without me doing anything. Simple and complex. Uh, Will Call, which just launched here in New York but has been going on in San Francisco for a while. If I want to see a show tonight, I can open up Will Call. I can get a list of the shows that are going on in the city. I can tap. I can read about the band. And if I want to go to the show, I tap once more, it charges it to my card, and one or two hours later, that ticket is waiting for me at the will call of the venue. Operationally, extremely complex, but the simplest package you can imagine. And Uber, um, something that we've probably all used, solves the very complex problem of how do I get to point A to point B? Um, how do I do that in a really simple way? I just tap. A car picks me up, I get to where I'm going, I get out of the car, I don't tip, I don't give them a card, nothing. It's all taken care of. Simple and complex. So when you look at um, these apps, they're all really, really, really different, but the thing that binds them together is the fact that they tackle really complex problems in really simple ways. And so the question that comes up is, why does that work? And we think it works for a couple of reasons. Um, we think it works because um, simple apps are really easy to understand, and you need that. Um, when you look at sort of the, the, the way that apps are distributed nowadays through stores, um, you can download them really, really quickly, and generally it's free or really, really, really cheap. And what that means is the barrier to disregard an app is much, much lower than it's ever been. It's not like traditional software. So when you download an app, you need to explain what you're doing, and you need to make it clear how you do that um, in a couple of minutes, or people are going to forget about it probably forever. If you do get somebody to keep their app or keep your app on, on your phone, then it also needs to be quick and, uh, and to the point. So nobody's really using their phone uh, at all times. We're using our phone at like the intersections of like the things we're doing in real life. Sorry, so, Sorry continue. I'm getting growled in the right corner from Carolyn in the back of the room, but... Uh, <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, so 
these apps need to be quick and to the point. So like I'm using this app when um, you know I'm riding the elevator up to work or when I'm like waiting to to pay my dinner bill or like I'm trying to like change my tickets at the airport or something like that. That's when I pull out my phone and that's when I use these apps. So like I need to be sure that the app that I'm using delivers on on uh, the value that it promises me in that period of time and there's no guarantees. And uh, we think the third reason that simple and complex apps work is the nature of the device. Like we're carrying these things around with us at all times. I can pull it out right now. I can look at a tweet that I got from from Carolyn, who's who's standing over there. Um, so what's that? That was the one Which that was, was growled. The growl that just showed up a second ago. Um, and I've got a really personal connection with this thing. This isn't a computer that I'm taking around with me. This is this is this is my life. I'm carrying this thing around with me. I can use it at any time. And when I go into one of the apps that I have on here, and it solves a complex problem for me in a really simple way, that's magic. Um, so when people talk about building apps that are simple, they often talk about reducing complexity. And um, we don't really think that it's about reducing complexity. The, the best apps are, like I said, simple and complex. We think it's about concealing complexity. Oh, right. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we actually apply this principle to the technology that we built for Vine. And I'm going to come right behind you over here. And I'm, I'm actually not, I mean, I caught some of the hands that are developers, but this is going to get a little technical. Um, and we'll have an opportunity. <clears throat> Into the mic? Just, uh, oh, sure, sure. Um, we'll have an opportunity to answer any questions that you guys have about really any of the technology. Um, but I'm just going to cover a little bit of like, how did we take the idea of simplicity and work it into the interface? Because um, this is, in a lot of ways, the magic of Vine. Um, people on Vine really do two things. They watch video and they share video. So all of our focus really went into how do we make those two things much, much simpler than anyone who came before us and hopefully hit success. Um, and starting with um, watching videos, you know, we had this really specific vision of everything moving all the time. And if you've used Vine and you open it up, the first thing you experience is everything moves, or it should move. If your bandwidth is good enough and you're downloading fast enough and all these certain, uh, certain hurdles are cleared. Um, one of the first things we had to figure out was how do we keep the videos um, downloaded ahead of where you're scrolling in the feed? Uh, one of the ways that we do that is we actually preload up and down. So as you're scrolling and you're deaccelerating your scroll, we'll make the guess that you're going to stop and watch something because you saw a thumbnail that you thought was interesting. And we'll start preloading down and then up. Um, and in this way, you can actually you can pivot up and down the feed, and it seems like everything is just already there. Um, we try to monitor how much bandwidth you actually have and deliver you the size video that's going to work best for your network. Um, so if you're on 3G or Edge or sort of have bad network conditions, we're going to serve you a lower quality video. Uh, if you're on 4G, LTE, Wi-Fi, we want you to get the highest definition video possible. And the way that uh, we create those videos is actually downcoding on the server. So you create a high, uh, high quality video on the phone, upload it to us, we take that source, we validate it, um, downcode it, and then depending on if you go between cell towers, we'll actually notice that your bandwidth has uh, declined and we'll start serving you lower quality videos as a result of that. Um, the other thing that was essential to the viewing experience is that looping be seamless and that um, audio is a really tough problem that we face, um, especially because of the cut-based nature of Vine. So we spent a lot of time getting the, the scrolling, looping, and audio right. Um, and it, it's more difficult than it sounds. Um, we do some things like as, you're, as you scroll into a video and it will start to play, the audio will actually fade in as you scroll. Um, a lot of touches and iterations like that that we felt were really necessary to make viewing video on mobile really simple and pleasurable. And I think the result, and I've seen this from um, non-technical people that have used the app, is just pure enjoyment, um, which is kind of exactly what we're going for. The other um, thing that we had to tackle was sharing video. And this is actually a lot more complex even than the viewing of the video. Um, it kind of comes in two categories, capturing video and then uploading video. Um, you know, we really wanted the upload to be almost instant. So by the time you were done with the app, the app was done, and you weren't waiting around for it to do something. Um, and so on the capture side, we encode the video on the fly. So by the time you're done shooting, the app is done. Um, you're, not, you're never waiting for the app. 
Um, we also do some work with audio. In, in the early, sorry, just ignore the upper right. In the early days, um, like point 0.9 was pretty rough. Um, you know, when you would jump between cuts, if you were indoors for one cut and outdoors for the next cut, like you would hear this crazy pop in the audio. It was really not pleasurable. So we went so far as to kind of crossfade the audio between cuts so that we could sort of dither the sound and make it a little more even. Um, and the other thing that I actually will let Dom share is how we um, avoid abrupt cuts at the end of video. Something that we saw a lot early on was videos would just kind of end abruptly. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so one of the questions that we get all the time is why is it six seconds? Um, and there actually isn't like a great answer to why it's six seconds. Please don't answer that question. Yeah, I'll talk about I'll talk about why um, why we did this this way. So we started at five seconds and we went all the way up to ten. And what we found was that like the quality of the video didn't really change at all, but it became a real pain in the butt to watch a ten second video. And it was hard to upload too. So we went back down to five, but a lot of people were saying like this isn't enough time. I can't like capture what I want. Um, Actually, we went up to six for a bunch of reasons, but even at six, people were sort of having the same problem. They're like, I'm getting cut off. Like, I can't communicate the idea that I want to communicate. And what we realized was it wasn't an issue of the length per se. It was an issue of people having a really hard time gauging what they had left based on just the progress bar. So what we did was we had the progress bar represent six seconds, but we let you shoot past the six seconds up to 6.5. And as soon as we did that, the quality of that last cut on these on these videos people were making went up like like ten times. It was so much better. So it's just like another case where where we needed to to take something that was a little more complex, which was like, how do I figure out exactly what I've got left and just make it simpler? And the way we made it simpler was we just sort of um, let you overflow. We just let you overflow. Um, and the result, I mean, was much better by doing that. Uh, the last. Whoop. The last thing I just wanted to mention was, I know this is mobile, mobile, mobile meetup, but um, the server plays a big part in how uh, the app, um, how the user experience works on the app. So one specific point is, when you're uploading, um, we, we basically respond immediately, and everything that's going to happen after that upload, from validation to downcoding to sharing to distribution, is happening asynchronously. So the user, when they upload, all they're doing is spending as much time to get to the server as they need and back. Um, they don't wait for the server to do anything. Um, and that really gives us the uh, feel of instantaneous upload, which was really important in, in the, the sharing video part of, of the app. Um, I think that's actually all we had planned to present here, but we could definitely ans ask, answer any questions. And that's our email and Twitter. Please. Uh, Sorry? We don't maintain a connection. Not yet. Sure. Please. Yeah. Uh, what technology stack did you use? If you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, we run in EC2. Um, we're written in Python. And we use a slew of open source technologies, you could probably guess, from MySQL, Redis, uh, RabbitMQ, et cetera. And we're written on Flask. Flask? We've written on Flask? Please. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the part of serving up quality video depending on your connection. Mm -hmm. Are you guys using the HTTP live streaming stuff built into iOS? Would you like roll your own kind of No, so um, we uh, swizzled. Swizzled, yeah, I can't remember the word. Uh, we swizzled um, we swizzled the HTTP request libraries in, uh, in iOS and we track um, when a request starts, when a request ends, and on the callback, we, request, uh, we, we track how much data has come back on the callback for progress. And then all of that gets reported to a single repository. So every single request that gets made counts towards a running average of what your bandwidth is. And then we use that to determine um, which quality video you should download. Thank you for opening the windows. Please. <laughs> Question on the side. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, are you guys doing an Android version? And uh, we are doing an Android version, um, and we've never paid anyone. <laughs> we've never paid, <laughs> never paid anyone for anything. No, that's not true, but not that <laughs> <laughs> Not for promotion.
please. Uh, I was wondering, so I think it's super interesting what you said about kind of solving for issues users might be having at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. But what about at the beginning? I know like there's some limitations with like focusing. Mm -hmm. Like how can you address that? So, so go ahead. Uh, we're working on it. Um, there's plenty of ways that we can address it. We're sort of working through all the possibilities and um, I think we're pretty close to landing on one. Um, it took a while to get there, but, but I, think it's, I think it's like the best way to do it. So like focus was just one of those things that we couldn't get right for 1.0, but we're pretty close. Uh, in the back. Yeah, how did discussions start with Twitter and was it like being We talked to Twitter when we were talking about doing cards integration before launch. So um, uh, we just took some meetings over there to, to do like the, um, the integration that you see where there's a tweet with a, with a post from Vine on it. You click and it expands and it plays in line. And um, those talks developed further and further and we sort of realized that like a lot of our goals and stuff were really quite similar. And um, eventually that turned into acquisition talks and then there was like some back and forth there and then like eventually we got acquired. Um, as for being with Twitter, it's fucking cool, man. It's great. It's great. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a awesome. great place to work. Yeah, it's one of the best decisions we've made. Please. I have a more simple question. How did you guys meet together with this beforehand? Yeah, we worked together before. Uh, me and Dom worked together at a company called Jetsetter right before Vine. Um, and actually, the third co-founder, Russ, who is not here today, worked on Jetsetter as well. So we had uh, worked together for three years prior. Please. Uh, I noticed that That's uh, in the app store right now. It's just hasn't been approved, so. So soon. Look for it very soon. Uh, in the back. So how did you actually design iTrade? Like initially, how did you start, and then how like, to simplify it? How or actually you did to simplify your product? Uh, one more time. How do we simplify like, our product? So uh, how how did your iteration go? Like initially. Oh yeah. So the very first version of Vine um, was not social. Um, all it did was the, the shooting mechanic where you tap to hold and then it dumped it to your camera roll and then it crashed. Uh, it gave you a cute and, message before it crashed and, too. Um, and we gave that to people and um, they had fun with it and they would SMS us their videos and we thought, gosh, we should do a social layer and then we did that and then we had to simplify through that and like even like auto playing didn't make it in until like two months before we went out. And, you know, you just you start with something really simple, and then you you add the things that you think need to be added. And every time you add something, the complexity jumps up like exponentially. And then it's your job to like whittle that down and get it back to or as close to where you were. Like I even think the version that we have right now is still less simple than what we had, but the benefit is is worth it. So like it's always our job to to try and get it back to where it was when you when you add something new. Yeah, we've not been afraid to throw things out either. Uh, we'll often throw out whole features that we just don't think are good enough to put out. So a lot of iteration. Yeah. Who's responsible for the navigation? Because it's really cool and innovative. Uh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Was there something you guys were doing in your own lives before that you wanted to find a, a better way to do it, a better solution to find? Well, he has a good story for that. I don't. Um, yeah. So. I wanted to be a filmmaker when I was a kid, but I found it really hard to do. I bought a bunch of like, like I bought like a video camera, I bought, um, I didn't buy editing software because nobody buys software when they're like in eighth grade. They just download it and it was fine, whatever. Um, and I just, you know, I got like the whole arsenal of what you needed to, to like put together a film. And um, I spent like a summer doing that and it was a lot of fun and then I sort of just fell off. And I'd been programming, and I'd been designing, and like I guess like film was always like in the back of my head, and like on my phone in particular, it's almost all videos. Like I don't shoot a lot of photos, so even before we ever built this product, like I was shooting so many um, shorter videos. So I think like yeah, like totally, you know, like I was super, super, super into video and film, and I think everyone on the team is. So it definitely like um, manifests itself in the product. So. Yeah. Are you guys planning on editing, or adding any editing features? I know like some people I've spoken to about it. They, they really would like that addition. I would too, but I know it would kind of distract from your so concept. The reason we started with the cut is because it's like the most essential part of filmmaking. It's like the atomic unit. It's what lets you take a story that's this long and, and like make it this long. You can tell a 30-year story in two hours or 
a 10 minute story in six seconds. Um, that said, like, there's so many other um, techniques in filmmaking and so many other tools available and we're definitely looking at them and if we can figure out ways to make them just as easy as we did with, um, with, uh, with the, recording, uh, the recording tool that we have now, then we'll fit it in. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that we're thinking about, but we need to make it fit in the right way. Like what we don't want is like you record the video and then you get like Adobe Photoshop afterwards or like Final Cut Pro. Yeah, and then like, like, just like, I, I want to take back the last cut. You know? Oh, and doing? You know what I mean? Or like view where I'm at in the, in the loop right now. Like, yeah, so there's definitely like usability stuff like that that we're working through. Once again, it's like the same thing. Like how do we do that in a way that's not obtrusive to what we've got? But it's definitely like stuff that we're looking at. Cool. Yeah. Um, I honestly do not know. Um, <laughs> well, we built a product we thought was really great. Yeah. Uh, that's really the only thing that we did. I, I will say that um, when we had that first prototype that wasn't social, we knew we were onto something immediately, and that was like eight people using it, sending us SMSs. Like, just had that feeling. Like, we were working on a different startup at the time and then moved into this because um, it felt so right. Uh, yeah. How long did it take from your prototype to your launch? We have been working on this for a little bit over a year. So we first started writing code on April 12th, and um, the first code was committed, as it is when you start a project, on April 17th. Yeah. With me, anyway. Who do you see making the most creative use of the platform, besides Will Sasso? <laughs> <laughs> um, Will Sasso is great. Will Sasso is really great. Um, you know, it's, it's like, it's different every day. Um, ev we have, you know, we've got like a hip chat going on at the office and like, we've got this little bot in there where you, you paste a, you paste like a vine link and it turns it into a GIF and then you can click it and then like it plays the sound and stuff as an actual vine. Um, but you know, we paste like three or four links in there every day. Like the White House stuff yesterday was pretty crazy. After we introduced trending, like seeing like hallway swimming and like that slap game thing happen was like, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Um, Daft Punk doing that stuff with their album was really, really cool. I like the fact that there are like stars on Vine and they're showing up on other people's posts. So like um, um, Marlo Meekins showing up and I don't remember who, it was someone else's Jerome, post. Or, Jerome Jure. Yeah, Jerome Jure, like that stuff is pretty, pretty amazing. And, we didn't think that uh, stop motion was going to be as popular as it was. That was that was uh, really cool to see. Yeah. What's uh, what's next for mine? Um, I'm just going to keep looking at you. <laughs> photos. <No>. Um, <laughs> should have answered that myself. <laughs> Gosh, what's next? Um, so, basically, like we need to do a couple of things, like. Our first goal is to make everybody comfortable with video. Um, and we're off to a good start, but we're so far away from like having video be like this ubiquitous thing that everybody's comfortable doing. So like we need to build better tools to shoot video. We need to build better tools to let you like evaluate the video that you've that you've that you've been working on. We need to make it quicker to share, we need to make it better in all ways. So that's like the first thing. Um, the second thing that, that, we, that we're thinking about a lot is like right now when I shoot with Vine, I'm shooting my own personal narrative, um, but our lives are not that different. So like what if my narrative is very similar to your narrative? Like how do we like, what can we do with that? And then the third thing is just like communication through video. Um, right now we have one type of communication. You post it, everyone can see it. Um, but communication isn't like that. There's so many different ways to communicate, and um, and we're exploring those. So that's like a hint, without getting into actual like product features or anything like that. Right. And I think uh, ubiquity. I mean, more platforms and sort of broader right. reach. Right. Something that we're thinking a lot about. Yep. Any possible chance of a Windows Phone version, or it's just Android? everything is possible. Everything, Every, everything is possible. <laughs> yeah. When you uh, uh, we're working on it as hard as we can. Soon. Soon. Sometime. And with the glasses, the 
sweet shades. <laughs> Sorry, you know who you are. <laughs> I like brands advertising. Yeah. So there's been a couple of early adopter brands like um, like uh, Urban Outfitters and Red like Vines. General Electric and Red Vines. Red Vines. Um, and and those brands are really cool because they're they're using the exact same app that everyone else is using to create that stuff. So it's like this equal playing field. So like awesome. Like why not do that? Um, but if you're asking about like like um, like actual like One more question. well rendered. Uh, advertisements like no like no it's it's about using the tool like you got to use the tool you got to put it up from the tool like everybody's got to be on the same playing field that's like one of our core values have we, we have time for just one more question so no pressure yes if we do a website and um, and there's you know like I said everything's possible, but if we do a website, we wouldn't we wouldn't build a replica of our client. That's not really useful for anyone. Um, this is inherently a mobile product. We would need a really good reason to build a website, and we would build the website around that reason. I think that's actually it. Thank um, you guys. Thanks.